more of your adopted human sibling. Uh, well... Kara and I were best friends. To be honest, though, I think I just said that because they were my only friend. For some reason. I would keep a distance if I were you. He's got fleas. Ew! <sighs> Lacking a playmate, huh? Why not Jerry? Is it true you got fleas? Can I see? I want my mom! Not like there were a lot of options. Kara and I were a pretty good duo, though. We'd get into all sorts of mischief together. Oh, shoot! That was Mom's favorite face! She's gonna obliterate us! Do not panic. I am thinking. I have a plan. You write on the wall with Mother's lipstick and distract them while I pick up the pieces and fix it. They always had good escape plans. Sorta. Kinda sucked for me. Always getting in trouble. Taking the blame like I was... some... sort of... Scapegoat! Ah! <laughs> That's clever. And you didn't object to Kara's plans. Coffee? Tea? Coco? <sighs> Coco, please. And I did. But I'd end up being called a crybaby. Didn't like that. You had trouble standing up for yourself. Even in wake of Kara's desire to wipe out a human village? At the time, I didn't know. They worded it... differently. I don't want to be nosy, but don't you get worried sometimes? Worried of what? Your family. You know, your human family? <sighs> you are my family. I do not need any humans. Humans do not know love, or compassion, or joy. They lost that when they created the barrier and banished your kind. Yeah, I bet if we monsters could reach the surface, we could teach them. Maybe finally make peace. Hmm. I have a plan. Apparently, buttercups are a bad way to go. Okay, remember the plan. As soon as I see it, take the soul. Pass the barrier. Pass the barrier. Change the world. So far, so good. Sweet cheese sticks, what is that orb of pain? Calm down. It is the sun. Uh, okay. So how does the rest of the plan go? We will go to my village. There, we shall place my body by the golden flowers. Show the humans the godlike power we can achieve when monsters and man unite in peace and harmony. And kill them all! I'm sorry, what? Why did you say all like that? We only need six souls! That is true. However... What? I have a very high respect for monsters. Okay, but... And humans, they are violent and ruthless. How? Kara! Why not give a demonstration of our power? How would that help? By attracting attention. And making a statement. I don't know what you're doing with the body of a child. But you best back away before anyone else gets hurt. <sighs> this is exactly what I was saying. Always quick to attack. I can sense your intentions, Kara. Don't fight him! We must show them what a monster can really do, my brother. You said we were gonna show them love! Love comes from respect, and respect comes from fear. <sighs> no! And we will show them no. why we should be feared. No! Stop! Right there! <sighs> what are you doing? I'm putting in my say. Azriel, stop. Give me back control. No! I call shotgun! You cannot call shotgun on a body! Well, I did. Brother, this is not a game. If we do not act now, the humans could... I can't think of a worse time to finally grow a pair. You have been shot. Give me control so I may retaliate. No! Azriel, you are dying. You can level this town with a snap of your fingers, yet you are dying. I won't fight. They are a disease, Azriel. Why is it still moving? I can feel your hate, Kara. Your hate for them. It resonates from your soul. You shouldn't be near something you despise so much. Don't let it get away! Jeez, why won't it go down? You're going back to your real home. Where you are loved and cared for. To rest. It's better here. Don't you think, Kara? You... 
You... You idiot. Those last words refused to leave me. How do you think that event affected you in later times? I don't know. It might have messed me up a bit. Just a little, though. Being a soulless flower probably amplified it. I mean, I think that's the worst part! I can't blame it all on Kara. I was too freaking spineless to say it was a bad idea sooner. I helped them go through with it! They might have adopted that kill-or-be-killed mentality, but I acted on it! The time loops, the betrayal, the destruction... Heck, projecting that attitude onto someone who actually knows how to love? That's on me! That's on me! I acted out of fear, that day at the village, when I first reset, now some cosmic stars align or whatever, it's given me another chance at life, maybe to fix things, be the prince of this world's future, or just another opportunity to ruin everything, and that scares me, I don't deserve this. Mr. Dreamer, while your situation is unique, your emotional state is actually very common. You've been linking your self-worth to the expectations of others. And in the event of not meeting such expectations, you consider yourself inadequate, or even weak or worthless. Because of this, you blame yourself for the events and traumas long ago. You are stronger than you allow yourself to believe. You overpowered a human soul to avoid conflict. You shattered the barrier and freed monster kind. You escaped death itself. And you came here for help. Those don't seem like weaknesses to me. Don't value yourself through faults, but strengths. If what you claim is true, you must have spent centuries reliving the past. You need to break free of that self-doubt holding you there. Trust in those who love you. They'll remind you of your worth and help you carry forward. That way, you'll never be weak, and you'll never be alone. Stay determined. Hey, you noticed something weird with Mom lately? Like, I know she's not on good terms with Dad, but lately, even just mentioning him makes her... Uh... Unpleasant. Her scowl during those moments puts yours to shame. Right? What bothers me is why she can't stand him, but seems perfectly fine with me. Especially with what I've done. Does she know? She should. Didn't you tell her? I thought you told her. You said you would! Perhaps in another timeline, but definitely not in this one. Hey! I thought we both agreed we wouldn't joke about that. Sorry, Azzy. I am a bit surprised. You never want to go on grocery runs with Frisk and me. Yeah, I came so you could drop me off at Dad's on the way. I want to talk with him about stuff. Oh, well... And before you say, But I am a parent, you may talk with me. It's because it's more... Guy stuff. But... And before you say, I thought you had Frisk for that. Not even they know where they fall on the spectrum. And you know that. My heavens, Asriel, that is the last thing I was thinking. I was going to ask how long you would stay. You know plenty of guy stuff. Yeah, it's no issue. I'll even drive him back. Save you some trouble and gas. <laughs> it would be a change of pace. Huh? Oh, okay, bye. Ooh, she's gotten quicker with those quips. Ah, well. It's worth it for some milkshakes and a view of the sunset over the lake with my boy. I'm glad you think so, Dad. Uh... You mind if I ask you a personal question? Sure. So, you've done some... unpleasant things in the past. Golly, that's, uh... quite a bit of sugarcoating there. 
How do you move on from that? Hmm. That sort of negativity is like a lead weight tied to your heart. And if you focus on it too much, it can get heavy enough to crush it. So you try and balance it out with positive things. It doesn't have to be anything huge. Just small, good moments. It could be picking up a new hobby, or a sale on your favorite candy, enjoying a movie, helping a neighbor, or spending weekends with your kids. You focus on the good for long enough, the pain of your regrets dull a bit. You forget about it a bit longer each time. After a while, it's like it's not even there. Have you gotten to that point yet? I know it's not what you want to hear, son. But I don't see myself getting there anytime soon. Why do you ask? I know I don't talk about it at all, but back when I was a flower, I did a number of unpleasant things, too. Unpleasant thi- Oh. Oh. Hey. If I didn't think I could ever move on, do you think I'd bother? Even if that vision of inner peace is far away, you have to keep up hope. Right? As long as it doesn't drag on like your last vision. Oh no! Tori's rubbing off on you! I didn't mean it like that! <laughs> no therapy session today? Doc had to reschedule to tomorrow. So tonight, it's Coco, Cookies, and Pixar movies. Well, as long as you're in bed by 11. Hey, Mom. While you're here... Can I tell you something? Of course, dear. I'm <laughs> all ears. Awesome. So, I think it'd be a great idea if you tried talking out your issues with Dad. Uh... That's not an all ears face. I am sorry. May I ask what warranted that thought? I don't know. I noticed how you act toward him. And trust me. A grudge can mess things up bad. It would be better for everyone to just... work it out. I mean, don't you think he deserves a bit of slack? It is best that I do not answer. Mom, come on! Dad's trying his hardest to move forward, like me. And it seems like you don't want him to. He should get as much as a chance as I do. My child, I wish you would not compare your situation with his. It is not like you have taken innocent lives. Except I have, Mom! <laughs> You have... what? I've... I've killed people, Mom. When I was a flower. That flower. When Dad did it, he had a reason. It wasn't justified, but he had one. I didn't. I... wasn't all there. I was messed up. I had no reason. I did it because I could. For kicks and giggles. I struck down almost everyone in the underground multiple times. I've killed you, and Dad, and Alphys, Papyrus, the Paperboy. I must have killed Frisk thousands of times. And that's with some generous rounding down. And that haunts me. The regret's soul crushing. And I want to escape it, to heal. And I know those chances are small, but I can't give up. But when I see you still hanging on to that rage towards Dad, then how in Hotlands can I think I can get over it? I don't need to hear that I can never be forgiven, that there's no hope of improving, not from you. So for the sake of everyone, you either do something to fix this, or you best start giving me a worse time than you do to Dad. I need a moment. Mom. I need a moment. Where do you think you are going at this hour? 
Asriel's gone for a walk and you plan on joining him. He hates being alone. In the dark? He goes on night walks when he feels helpless. Helpless? Did he really mean what he said in the kitchen? Asriel was serious when he said all that. It's not your place to say, but he's in a lot of pain due to his past. He has that in common with his dad. You let Toriel know her actions toward Asgore hurt Asriel because of that. Again, it's not really your place to say. You just want to be there for your brother. You promise to be back before curfew. Just a sec. I'll... Oh, howdy, Toriel. Why are you up so late into the... Have you been crying? What's wrong? I need your help. What has Asriel told you regarding his time as the flower? Not much. He hardly mentions it at all, and I don't want to force him if he's uncomfortable. I've only gotten hints that he's done stuff he's really not happy about. He told me. He has murdered in the past, it seems. He was quite vocal about it. Oh no. Toriel, I understand the things you do and harbor against me, but please, don't give that boy more grief than he already has. How dare you think I would actually do that to... to... You do. Oh, heavens. It is worse than I had feared. I've been letting my emotions get the better of me. And it is for that reason I seek your help. One thing I can always trust is your infallible memory. Really? Well, sure. I can definitely help with that. Could you recount the day we lost Asriel and Kara? Oh. Oh, gosh. The one day I'd rather not remember as clear as day. I know, but not once have we really sat down and talked about it. And I feel the hazy details are only amplifying problems here and now. Please. It was a Thursday. Spring. Kara was ill and bedridden for days. Yet that reporter with the weird laugh insisted on coming by anyway to record a tour of the house. The laugh I remember. Don't you worry, your highness. We can always cut them out in editing. They're not part of the decor. <laughs> kids? Kara? While you entertained, Asriel? I noticed the kids' room was empty. Where'd you go? Kara was too weak to move, so I got worried. And your husband grew these! Along with every plant in and around the home. It is a passion of his. I didn't expect someone in a white fur coat to have a green thumb. <laughs> okay, that was admittedly clever. And here is the barrier. Nothing very intricate, save for these flowers for color. Oh, there's my loving husband over there. Tori? Asgore? They're both gone. It felt as though my own soul was threatening to shatter. I remember just howling all the way to the ritual. But, Asgore, you did not cry. You hardly spoke. You seemed to have shut down completely. What was going on inside your head during all that? <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Only questions. So many questions. Yeah. How did this happen? What could I have done to prevent it? Why them? Why now? What can be done now? 
Where is our hope? Your Majesty. Your Majesty? What? Huh? Hello. Doctors came back from sweeping, and they found evidence that your kids traveled to the surface. Bullets. From human weapons. They were shot, I fear. I wasn't expecting answers to those questions. So, when I got them... My mouth moved before my mind could. Citizens, today marks a heavy loss for our family. Our children, Azriel and Kara, were found dead this afternoon. Those two innocents symbolized hope of our future. Hope that man and monster could live united. That humans were capable of love and compassion. But it's clear that's not the case. You... You may think we've lost that hope. That once again, the humans have taken everything from us. But my people, this is false! They've taken our hope for peace, but not our hope for freedom. It's obvious now that our destiny is not coexistence, but taking back what was once ours! I swear to you, monsters of the underground, that I will find the souls needed to break the barrier! By force if I have to! I will correct the wrongs we have faced for eons! Our future will shine crimson with the blood spilt by any human who dares cross us again! Be it man, be it woman, or child! Show them no mercy, our king! Slaughter them all! Praise King Asgore Dreamer! Up to that point, you were so full of heartbreak and sorrow. As soon as I said that sentence, the only emotion on your face was utter disgust. I could only imagine. What on earth were you thinking, declaring war like that? I wasn't. I wasn't thinking. I acted on impulse. And you know how well those decisions turn out. Hmm. Like the time you purchased that camper without checking if it still had its motor? In my defense, that guy never mentioned it was a restoration project. <laughs> or that time you gave me one of those Opie shirts, thinking it was a kitten's face? Oh gosh, <laughs> that. <laughs> and that's not to mention every time you hid the coupons from me so I wouldn't go crazy at the market. Oh heavens, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't justify anything, though. I know it doesn't. Even in the right mind, I'd need someone to stop me from doing something incredibly stupid. I suppose neither of us were in their right mind. It's no excuse for what I did. The whole ordeal is my fault. But it's no excuse for me either, then. Not when I could have stopped you. Beg pardon? I should have stopped you. I should have done something to calm you down, instead of run off. I was so distraught, and bent on making sure no child would ever hear the roars of fury I had heard. I did not think about the wails of sorrow that surely came after. I did not want to be part of any plot for murder. I did not want that blood on my hands. Not that my efforts to prevent that amounted to anything. Six human souls harvested because a sentimental old goat could not keep them in the ruins. Toriel. And with every life lost, of course, I had to take it out on you. I intended to hurt you. I wanted to hurt you. I had to be sure you were pained with the same guilt I had losing those children. But if I had known I was hurting my son as well, I... I... I would have... Perhaps I would have realized earlier how much of a prideful fool I had become. Tor I am a fool to hold that against you so incessantly. You were grieving, and trying to keep hope from dying. Hope of better times ahead. You continue to do that for Asriel. You've been giving him motivation to keep going. Here I am, letting my pettiness convince him otherwise. Because I cannot let go of the past, I am denying him a future. I... I do not want to ruin that boy's hopes and dreams. I have been a detriment to the both of you. I must come off as irredeemable. 
I... Please stop. Trust me when I say beating yourself up won't help for beans. I don't want you to do that. I just want you to let me be there for our son. I want to help. More than anything in the world, I want to see him happy. I know you want that too. So you and I, we're gonna make that happen no matter what. Step by step. But we will. He deserves at least that much from a couple of sad old monsters. Right? <sighs> right. The important thing is that you made your situation clear. It's obvious you both share an issue of clinging to the past. Nobody's perfect, after all. If you're trying your best to overcome, who's to say she wouldn't, hmm? If you say so. See you next week! Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Mom! He's within fireballing range! Pfft. Har har. My child, I must apologize. I have not been the most exemplary parent. And my refusal to change has been hurting you severely. I failed you for that. But I will not make that mistake again. That being said, I must make this very, very clear. Regardless of what you did in the past, no matter how unpleasant, you are our son. Nothing will ever change that. Should you ever feel down, remember... You're never alone. We're here for you. <laughs>